Hello and welcome to Design Patterns. Today we will look at the abstract factory. So the abstract factory is all about creating whole families of related objects. So it's in creational pattern. So um, like the normal factory method and like the builder. But here the, the, the emphasis is laid on families of related objects. So it could look like this. Don't be overwhelmed by the graphic. It's, it will, I will explain it. So our client wants to create objects as, as always. And we have two lines of objects. For example, product line A, which is compatible to each other and product line B, which is compatible to each other. So they have interfaces which work together. And uh, we don't know exactly which family of objects we want to use at runtime. So we want to be flexible there. And therefore, um, we use an abstract factory. And we just tell the abstract factory, get, uh, give me a factory for product line A. And give me a factory for product line B. B, for example, or for product line one and for product line two. And then we get a factory, for example, this concrete factory one, which can create product A and product B, but which are compatible to each other. So for example, this one. So this, this is the product family, and these are aligned together, and these are compatible to each other. Um, but these are different from the second product family and uh, product A2 would not be compatible with product B1, for example. Think of an IKEA, uh, IKEA system where you have some, some desk or some chairs which uses screws or some connector elements which are compatible to each other, but not to other product families, for example. Anyways, it's still a screw. It's still a chair. So you can see it like this. So the abstract factory is about creating a factory for different families of related objects. So what is the context? First of all, we need to have or we have different related families of similar objects. If you only have one object family, it doesn't make sense to use the abstract factory. And our problem here is now, how can we create matching objects? Objects which belong together, which are compatible with each other, and so on. So the forces is, we only want to, so we have different families, they are compatible inside the family, but not outside. And we want to create a system which fits together. The next thing is we want to choose the object family at runtime. Because if you already know at compile time which family we need, um, we don't need it that flexible. But very often we don't know that. And we want to reveal just the interfaces, not the implementation. So this is a general principle um, behind many design patterns. And here especially um, we, we apply it. So we want, to, or we have to create some interfaces in order to fulfill, fulfill this requirement. So what is the solution? First of all, we have to define the interfaces for the products. For example, connect the elements, chairs, screws, and so on. Or think of graphical design. We have to define interfaces for buttons, for uh, text boxes, and so on. So these have to have um, similar interfaces for the usage. Then we have to define the interface for the factories. For example, get me a button, create me a text box, create a radio box. And afterwards, we have to implement both accordingly. So we have to implement the products and the factories. Um, think of um, an application which uses different, um, different user interfaces. For example, one is 
a classical Windows Forms interface. The second one is a, a Windows Presentation Foundation interface, a VPF interface. VPF uses different, completely different um, types of, of buttons and text boxes and window elements than the Windows Forms, and they are not compatible to each other. So, what else? Ah, yeah, we need to select the needed factory at the runtime. So we have, we must choose at some point during runtime. We have to decide which actual framework we're going to use, and therefore we have to provide some means how to select the correct family. So what are the consequences? Um, exchanging product female families is easy now. So we can decide at runtime that we want to have the other family. Um, products get more similar or not similar, they get consistent. So they have similar behavior, similar properties and so on. And we only depend upon the interface of the products and not their actual implementation anymore. Then furthermore, it isolates the concrete classes. Again, by having this interface as an, as an uh, intermediate layer between the actual uh, um, implementation and the, the usage. But there is something left open. For example, when is the product family selected? Uh, selected? At the start of the application or some, somewhere in between, somewhere in the middle? And then who selects? Who is the one who decides for the actual product family? And then are the factors singletons? So if we decide for a specific family, can then there only be this one family for the whole runtime? Or could, or could I instantiate an additional um, factory and use two families at the same time. Should we use prototypes as templates? For example, if I create a specific button, should I copy this button or should I create this button new all the time? And there is one difficulty when I use the abstract factory supporting new kinds of products is difficult. Why? Because I have to change the interface of the factories. And then I have to change it for all factories. So um, if I have more families, then I have to add this product in all families. And this could be a problem sometimes. So what is an abstract factory? Factories building factories, machines building machines, like it was the theme of Terminator. Okay, thank you very much, and have a good day.